talk about the assistant principal playbook. Uh, and then I'm also an aspiring uh, real estate investor. Um, I'm kind of house hacking right now. So that's my uh, entryway into real estate investing. I have a house on the south side that I'm renting out to travel nurses currently. So I'm, I'm juggling a lot of balls. I'm wearing a lot of hats. I'm tired all the time. But you know what? Uh, you got to take risks to get to where you want to get to. Uh, any questions so far? Uh, my journey for education, um, I graduated high school in 2009, uh, went to go play Division three basketball at Millie University in Decatur, Illinois for one year, and I pumped out. Basketball wasn't going well, so I said, all right, I'm just going to go to class. That didn't hurt anybody but me. That very next year, I looked in the mirror, I said, I got to get myself on track. Went back to my hometown, went to Parkland College for a year, got my GPA up, uh, and then I got my bachelor's degree in uh, 2013. Uh, from Eastern Illinois University, went back, taught in my hometown, coached in my hometown. I thought I was going to be a hometown hero. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. They might think we're superheroes, but we're just humans uh, that, that do great things. Um, and I realized that if I don't help myself, I can't help other people. So that, I learned that lesson early on. Like I said, I came to UND, two and a half years, no pay, so going for teacher salary and talk about teacher salary. But let me tell you, it's a lot better to make it known. Uh, for two and a half years, coaching, getting my master's. Um, went back into teaching at Perry Meridian High School, coached basketball there. Uh, like I said, I had five preps. Uh, a lot of life situations were happening. I had a lot of health issues. Um, had a failed engagement. I'm just being real with you all. You got to be real with people. Um, and that drove me to make a change because I needed to free up time for myself. And I knew that I had four engines. Um, and that's what kind of drove me to leadership. Uh, from there, I uh, went to go be a dean at Riverside High School. Uh, did that for a year and a half. Left there, went to Washington Township. I was the dean of students the first ever dean last year at Northview Middle School. Uh, and then this past year, I finished up my first year as an AP uh, at Perry Green uh, Middle School. So things have been boom, boom, boom for me. Uh, life has been one long day. Since 2013. Uh, why did I choose to lead? I, I think this is super important, uh, and I'm not going to tell you exactly why because there's a slide that I kind of want to share. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of Nipsey Hussle, but he, he's one of my favorite artists. He, he's no longer living, but he was an inspiration to a lot of people just about uh, being good to people, educating yourself, trying your best, uh, never stop working. And he said the highest human act is to inspire. So that's why I lead every day. That's why I go to work every day. I know that I inspire people. It, it, it's not a mystery. I have that inside of me. Um, and I also know what it's like to have a bad leader. And as you all transition into leadership roles, or if you're in your leadership role right now, be visible. Hopefully you can see that. Be visible. Because I've had leaders that aren't visible. They're not approachable. You can't talk to them. Don't be that type of leader. Don't be in your office all the time. Be in the hallways during passing periods. Walk through lunches. Some of you might have to run lunches. Like, that's part of my duties. You have to be visible. So your teachers have to see you. Your students have to see you. Um, and luckily, uh, I worked with probably the best principal that I've worked for last year. He's moving on to central office now. But he was always visible. Um, he would always come in my office and just talk. It didn't even have to be about work. So that's something that I hope you all take with you uh, on your leadership journey. I want to be of service to others because I'm going to help myself. I learned that a long time ago. Uh, so every day I get to wake up and I get be of service to others, and we'll talk about how I have the energy to do that as well. And I don't want to challenge myself. All right, there's another slide that talks about intrinsic motivation, right? I have, I get a lot of satisfaction out of getting things done. All right, y'all don't understand how happy I am just to be able to come in here and talk to you all right now. This is major. I would have never thought a couple years ago that I would be sitting here talking to people, future leaders or current leaders, about my journey and my experiences. And that's what keeps me going. Uh, before we go to the next slide, I think you all have this value rubric yes. in front of you. Thank you. You have a value rubric. Yes. Everybody got it? Let me give you about three to five minutes. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how long it takes. Probably just three. Um, your task. Let's figure out what you value most. I want you to go through right now and select 10 things. 
10, 10 things, 10 values on this rubric that stand out to you. Just 10. Don't narrow them down. Pick 10. Give me about two minutes for that. Sixty seconds. Get to ten. We got 10? Six percent. Keep people still working. Count them out, make sure. Okay, now take about a minute and a half and narrow that 10 down to five. So some of those things might be super and super important to you, but you gotta cut a few of them out. We gotta narrow it down to five. You got a minute and a half to narrow it down to five. For the time on my Apple Watch right there. Just wearing it for show. <laughs> Good, we got five, we down to five. All right, now get that five down to two. Get that five down to two. Two values. Two values. When you finish, Find somebody in your row, that way you don't have to move just yet. Find somebody in your row. Talk about how those two came to be, the two that you felt were most important, and how those translate to being a leader in our school. You're about two minutes for that. You're about two minutes for that. That's okay. I did have a unique what is colors. Like I should all the Because I thought all the other ones were kind of fitness or just general You don't have to you gotta find something to do. Is like <laughs> is that in, in a sense of like not wanting to do the same things all the time, having you know options, different ways to approach things? Okay. Yeah. One hundred percent. So much to do with the world. Exactly. Yeah. There's, uh, there's some non-negotiables in my book, and one of them is prioritize itself. And you doing those things to prioritize itself. Um, yeah, I was listening to a podcast and said that burnout is due to energy mismanagement. So we have the time and energy to do the things we want. It's up to just mismanage it. We put that time and energy in places, spaces, and people that are just not serving. 
Um, I chose those two because I felt like they encompassed the 10 main ones that I had, uh, like affection, um, ethical practice, things like that. They can all be encompassed in those two domains um, and trying to find like that family balance, um, your family at school and my family at home. Yeah. How does your family at home help you be a better leader? Um, I can see it in a different lens now. So um, I have two boys and I think seeing that now that I'm transitioning to like the parent role with my kid going to school, trying to find the balance of like, okay, I'm a teacher, but like now I need to transition over and like, how can I carry that over into my classroom for my parents um, and other staff members who have families and being understanding that things happen and can't always be on time because you have kids and sometimes they're just not feeling it. Yeah, that resonates with me a lot because I don't have kids yet. Like I said, me and my last principal got really, really close. Um, he was really, really hands-on. And, you know, he told me, you're doing a great job. But you're also going to see things a lot different when you have kids of your own. So uh, that definitely resonates with me. Does anybody else want to share? Uh, I chose effective Okay. Uh, so maybe because I might not be on Sorry, 
position that I'm in. So I have to be motivated to keep going. I can't stay stagnant. I have to keep setting goals, short term and long term. I have to understand that it's not it's gonna be a rocky road. Alright, but when I get stuff done, it makes me feel so good. It makes me feel better than going on partying or, or shopping or doing things that I shouldn't be doing. And it's that intrinsic motivation to do a good job that it ends up being a benefit to other people, right? Because we're we're in a service profession, it's all about others. Um sense of purpose and passion, right? Like I feel like God has a greater purpose for me. I don't necessarily know exactly what it is, but I'm just following his footsteps. Um, and, and I have a passion for what I'm doing now. I really, really love what I do. I feel like I can do it for a long time. Uh, that there have been people reaching out, hey, you should apply for this, or are you gonna apply for that? But I really, really like what I'm doing. I've been bouncing around a lot of different townships. Uh, and, and I'm happy I can kind of finally settle in a little bit. I'm not saying I'm going to be there forever. Um, but there's something to be said about one being passionate and being a place where you're supporting your able to do this stuff. Um, and then opportunities for growth and development. That's why you all are here. You want to grow. You want to develop. You want to move up the chain. And there's different reasons as to why we want to move up that chain. Uh, but that's uh, what drives me to do my best. Because if I suck. Right, the people at Central Office are gonna know that I suck. I don't suck. So the people at Central Office know that hey, we might need to keep this guy around a little bit because he cares about kids, he cares about teachers, he's gonna work his butt off, he's gonna be authentic. I'm not gonna change who I am. Right? I can still make an impact just because I don't talk like somebody, or uh, I'm not as big into the numbers as somebody. Doesn't mean I can't make an impact and do a good job. So now it's on you. Why are you choosing to leave? Are you a climber? More money? Do you think you have something to offer others? You got your values here. Do your values add up? Or do they go with why you're choosing to leave? And there's nothing wrong with being a climber either. I, I, don't let anybody keep you at a certain level. If you want to move up and you want to strive for other things, go after that because how can we sit there and tell kids? But they need to dream and they need to strive for greatness and they need to try to be all they can be. And we're sitting there and we're not. That doesn't sit right with me. So, yes, I'm going to tell my kids I have a million other things going on outside of here. And I hope you do too one day. That why you're choosing to leave peace is super important. It's super important. Before I explain this, because we're not going to do this because it's too heavy, before I explain this, take about two minutes to write down why you're choosing to leave. Take about two minutes to write down why you're choosing to leave. Be intentional about it. Make sure it's actionable. Make sure it's explaining how you're going to be of service to other people. Go to the notes after my phone. It's just you can just scroll and scroll and scroll. It's notes and notes and notes. I would urge you, you wrote it down, you got the mental GoPro, put it in your notes, type it up in your Google Drive so you always have it. And this piece right here is why you're gonna always need that, why you're always gonna need the values. So as you're wrapping that up, um, last week we had our admin retreat so with all of the administrators in the district. We had a retreat. We had some breakout sessions. They brought in the speaker. Um, and, you know, we learned a lot. We went to Top Golf. And the next day we uh, had a presentation about the district's lawyer, and they went over some new law stuff. And uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with the transgender situation. Um, and one of the exercises on the the, the first day is going to stick with you forever. Um, the speaker had everybody take out a blank sheet of paper, and I'm not going to have you open this like I said, and write down something, a traumatic experience that happened in your life. Whether that be as an adult, whether that be as a child, um, and 
I was one of the ones that went up with the access for volunteers. So it was four volunteers. We had a bucket. We had all this trauma in the bucket. And we would just walk around. I would pick one out, walk to the front. I would read what it says. The next person, we would just go and go and go until we went through everybody. And you talk about uh, people being molested. You talk about uh, parents divorcing. You talk about uh, parents being alcoholics. All that trauma was in that room. There's trauma in this room right now. But your why is going to be super important because not only do you have to deal with your trauma, you got to deal with the trauma of the staff, you got to deal with the trauma of the students, you got to deal with the trauma of the families, and sometimes even the community. That's hard. It's hard to show up every day and deal with people's trauma, especially when you're dealing with your own stuff. But if you understand your why, and if you understand those values, you can pull up to work every day and be good. And they wonder why you got a smile on your face. I'm like, are you doing so much discipline? You're doing this, you're doing that. Why are you so happy? Because I know my why. Never forget your why. All right, uh, so four questions. I want you to kind of brainstorm these questions, um, write down some, some quick answers to these questions, and then we're going to talk to some other people in the room about uh, why you wrote down what you wrote. Uh, what do you hope to achieve as an education? First question. What experiences or people have influenced your decision to become a leader in education? I've got one over there. Uh, I've got another one. Uh, DeAndre Weaver was my avid teacher. Um, made his way all the way up to a superintendent in Texas at DeSoto Schools. And now he is in the private sector of education working for Digital Promise. And part of his job is with Verizon, too. I can't imagine the numbers uh, that he was getting now, but uh, those two definitely. Uh, and then how do you envision making a positive impact on students and teachers? I need you all to answer those questions. Let me know if I need to speed up. What do you hope to achieve? Do you want to become an asset to your district? Do you want to become a superintendent? Do you want to start your own consulting business? What do you want to do? Who are those people that are influencing? Influence you. And, and sometimes somebody might influence you in a negative way. Sometimes you might be working under some bad leaders or some bad co workers. You can even say, you know what, I'm not going to be that way, or I'm going to be a leader so I can change this because it'll better serve students. And then how do you envision making a positive impact for students and teachers? What does that look like? Let me know when you all have answered those questions. We're going to do some movement real quick. As soon as you finish, find somebody that's not in your same role. Talk about question number one for two minutes. I want you all to get up, move around. So they cannot be in your row. They cannot be in your row. We're just talking about go to achieve as an education leader. Yeah, We're going to try to run through these. Let's go. About six minutes, and we're going to do two minutes here. Two minutes here. Wrap up your final thoughts and then rotate. Find somebody else for question three. Wrap up those thoughts. Wrap up those thoughts. Go back to your seat. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
second thing is I'll be able to call my mom and tell her I didn't worry about it. That is going to make her day. You know, uh, I was able to give you all something of value. Uh, we're going to run through the rest of it a little quicker because I want to give you time to just ask some questions about the job. And I know that Nancy provided you all with some potential questions. Let's just talk about the job. What is it? Uh, that's what's most important to me. And kind of why I Um, does anybody want to share one profound thing that they heard via discussion? One profound thing. You don't have to. Something that stood out to you. Yes, you know. Travel kind of to what they heard to you and Fred as far as regardless of what you've been told or seen or the show. And I mean, I don't have to be asked. But I got a relation with it. Y'all just started the business. You can go teach people. Uh, leverage trauma to make sure that you keep in contact with one another. I'm always thinking, I'm telling you. Right. And then there's that added layer of people who are transitioning and teaching at the second career. And I talk about that in my book a little bit, and I kind of outline how you can support those people because they want to be there. That's why they made the transition, but they may not have the skills, you know, to make that art, so to speak. All right. Let's go. Anybody else, real quick, before I go to the next one? Um, so, like I said, I'm going to run through this so we can get to the questions. Uh, using data for impactful action. So, in our, in our building, we use data to identify trends and patterns. Um, we, it helps us to engage with the stakeholders, engage with uh, family members, engage with central office to let them know, hey, here's what we're seeing, here's what's coming down the pipeline. What we can we do, all right, uh, to strategically pacify these situations, for lack of a better term, is uh, evading, right? Proactive thinking. They're going to get $250 tickets. Man, can't really afford that. What we're going to do is, uh, they don't have to pay the ticket, but they're going to parent in a class. And they talk about it. They talk about how bad it is in our community and how to avoid it in gas stations not to go to. They'll sell it to them without ID. Uh, and that's engaging stakeholders. And that's making a difference in our community because of the Communities improve, like I said before, the schools will improve. Replace the discipline with more student engagement, stuff, right? Because like lunch detention, they don't care because there's ten other people in there in lunch detention that they can kick it with. Uh, so that is what I'm going to be working on for the rest of the summer, and I'm going to package that up as well, uh, and I'm going to try it in my school. Um, if you all see holes as leaders, try to fill those holes, right? And you don't have to ask questions; just act, and then. You know, if you fail, you fail, but you try to support your principal. I know you all are climbers. I know you all want to sit in that seat. But while you're not in that seat, do your job to the best of your abilities. Put out as many fires as you can before it gets to the principal's desk. Um, Non-negotiable number two, you got to prioritize yourself. All right, when work is done for me, I'm at the grid. Or I'm working on my business. Or I'm researching. Or I'm reading. Okay? That way... I'm able to show up every single day ready to get my very best for those 8 to 12 hours sometimes it's more, you know, you got extracurriculars. I'm able to show up as my very best because I know that I'm filling my cup outside of work. Um, number three, embrace confidence. Just be confident in what you do. If you mess up, you mess up, right? I could have came in here just like mom. It's okay, I'll learn from you. All right? Embrace confidence because you all wouldn't be in those positions if you didn't have the skills and the knowledge to be in those positions a leader. And then uh, within the book, uh, I map out our processes for suspension and expulsion, probationary agreements, because we don't like to expel. We like to offer probationary agreements, uh, give those kids another opportunity to learn, develop, and educate them rather than just kick them out of school. Um, but there, there are school districts that really don't discipline them. At some point, you have to uh, maintain the safety of your building. Um, so that's major as well. I can full support of my district. Uh, it goes to case conferences in your role as the PAR case conferences, movement conferences. A lot of times you'll have kids transfer in with a long disciplinary history or attendance or academic, um, you know, issues that they're bringing with them. Right? You gotta, you gotta be able to develop a plan for that student to be successful. If it don't work, it don't work. Right? But build that relationship through those movement conferences. New teacher development. I talked about new teachers and then people that are transitioning to teaching. I've got a whole list of how you can sit down with those teachers and get them off to a good start. When you talk about classroom management, 
education and processes and procedures were in the classroom. When a kid walks in your door, what processes and procedures do you have in place to get them ready to learn? Um, and then, uh, like I said, five or four plans. You can scan this QR code. It'll take you to uh, a link for the book, and it'll explain it. It is for sale. You don't have to buy it. If you want those non-negotiables, I'll send it to you. But it will make your job easier uh, because it's a it's a guide. It's a guidebook. So it's not something that's meant to be read front to back. It's something that's meant to be. All right. Well, my principal just told me I got twenty kids with five or four accommodation plans. I need to manage these kids. Boom, 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 boom. Makes it easier, trial and error. You might pick up some things along the way. Um, it'll just make your life a lot easier. So that was the whole point of this book to help people. Question? I'll pull up the chair, I'll sit down. Maybe five or six minutes. Okay. Right? That's perfect. Um, but first, how about if we have Alicia Pugliese?
Yeah, so that'll be run by the school resource officer as well, um, because they're out in the community a lot more than, than we are. Uh, some things are outside of the scope of the school, right? Like if there's a gas station that the police department has been watching for their selling products, uh, the, the minor, right? Like that's out of the scope of the school. But you know what? We got to deal with it because that stuff comes into our school. So then with that meeting with the school resource officers and different stakeholders, now we can educate the kids on the detriment that vapes are having to their lives and the parents on how to stop their kids from one vaping, get access to vapes, and all of those things. So the two hundred fifty dollars is really really just to like get their attention and get them to the door. But the education piece is really important because what we were doing this year is having them sit in ISI for three days, do a couple PowerPoint slides, send that to us, and they they going right back to what they're doing with the right? But we it's really epidemic. Um so we gotta handle it like this epidemic. Do I have so yeah, you were saying like with meeting some of the uh, schools in Korea that really resonate with me. Um, what's the strategy or like what's the advice that you would give a teacher that um, is passionate about helping the community at a school to, to try to uh, create that improvement? I think the biggest thing is controlling the community in the classroom. One of the things that I'm seeing uh, right now that I really want to work with our teachers better on is communicate with these families and students. It doesn't always have to be something negative. It can be something positive. But when you when you don't communicate with your, your family, with those students that are in your classroom, and you delegate everything to leadership, as soon as you give it to me, you've taken away all the power that you have in your classroom. Now it's my situation to handle and not yours. So I would say first, just empowering teachers to um, teachers on the front lines. So they see a lot more. <laughs> Communicate, communicate. I'm not telling the teachers to go handle this, but if it is, then they're able to support what we're trying to do at home. And that's landing my plane. If we, we want, we need them to be supporting what we're doing at home. I mean, they're building relationships with the kids and, and having fun just like we are. But if something high level happens where we need, you know, an officer there, that's what they're there for. Um, and then you said the probation areas. Those things, you have to get like, super creative sometimes. It's like you may suspend a kid for fighting, and then they may like do something else, and then they do something else where you want to expel them. But like you just don't want kids to move them. All of that instruction of time. So that's that's critical school. That's the alignment. Hundred percent. Yeah. Bryson, I'll send you everybody's email. Okay. Yep. Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Um. I'm gonna give you a Merry Christmas, bud. What happened? Right back here. Probably it's Merry Christmas is when you don't really know. He talked about the level of engagement, and he was talking about it from the standpoint of uh, what are the characteristics that they want to do is take a real look on calls where engagement is concerned. So there are four types of engagements that whenever we're going in, we're looking at them in a building. And the first one that we're looking at is the behavioral engagement. And so I'm coming into your classrooms and I'm looking at the habits that are going on. I'm also looking at, if you haven't seen it over here, the rituals that are taking place. And that sign over there is extremely important because everybody needs to be very clear about how we're going to be in this particular classroom and or this particular school. The next one is emotional engagement. And so when we're talking about that, you've already had choices. You've had choices of who you've been talking to. You have had, uh, you had to fill out that uh, inventory that he had you fill out. And the reason that we want that to occur is because we want you to be actively engaged in what it is and try to figure out, to his point a minute ago, what your interest is what you really want to know. And so therefore we provide that as we are working with you. The next one is intellectual engagement. So to that end, um, we want you actively problem solving and utilizing your metacognition skills. And so back over there, that's the reason you have heard all of us and you will, I mean, like we're broken records on this whole mental health curve. If you're familiar with the work out there on taking notes in a class, you would all be on, 
on top of it for increasing student achievement. But then when you look back there, everything that we do, everything that Bryson does, everything that I do is all related to the brand. Everything that we do. So the colors that we use in the classroom, the way in which it's up, looking for the pattern because your brain, my brain is a pattern seeking device. And so we want to make sure that we are giving you multiple opportunities to be successful. That same kid that is vaping and doing all that kind of stuff also needs for us to show him multiple pathways to success in the classroom. And finally, social engagement. We do this whole thing with the circle and it's called attachment theory. And so we don't want people teaching. We want them teaching right away, but we don't want them teaching right away. What you're going to be teaching is how we do things in the room. What kinds of things? What resources are we going to use? What kinds? How are we going to get along? What inventories are we going to do? Am I an auditory visual kinesthetic learner? And yes, we go all the way up. The grit survey that Angela Duckworth used, finding out grit, finding out whether or not I'm an introvert or an extrovert. All of those things have a lot to do with my social being in your classroom. Who can work with, who needs to sit up front, pardon me, who needs to sit in the back? The other thing, back over here, Merry Christmases, he's gonna take them, I know. Because right over here are the Merry Christmases for uh, this class. Merry Christmas. I'll take the picture. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. The other thing that I will point out while we are here, and since he was talking about behavior, Nadine's, we're very simple. We never go for rules. When I train people and work with people, then a principal, all that stuff, never go for the rules. Because what we go for is, we're going to do this. We're going to teach kids and in a community how to ask for help and do these. So we want this going on. We are going to have a courtesy policy in the school. It's that simple. This is how we're going to be courteous. Um, when Cody was talking about it, when you came to my building, my custodians, um, after the kids came in, washed every single door that they all came in. They were all washed as soon as the kids got off the bus and came in. Now, why is that important? Because when you walk in, if you walk in to a room that is not clean, like yesterday, I washed all these tables. I didn't ask the custodian. I came in here, I washed all these tables. Because that sends a very strong message about the way in which this is, uh, can I take care of myself? Can I take care of other people? My whole ability to do that. The other thing that I will say is that I think we ought to run a school like this. So after teaching at the alternative high school, then going back and teaching first grade, after being a principal, before going to district level supervision, I employed this. It's the same thing. So, honey, thank you. I can't thank you enough. He is like, he's going to be working with me again this summer, so I cannot thank you enough. Thank oh, no. Thank you. Okay. Lunch. Down the street, there's McDonald's. Up Illinois, there's a little restaurant. Down the other street, if you go this way, on 38th Street, there's a bunch of restaurants through there as well. If anybody's going out, anybody going out, everybody going out, whatever. Uh, Cheryl will be